This week ay pag-aaralan naman natin ang Module 2 which is the risk factors underlying disasters. At para sa ating most essential learning competency o ang tinatawag nating MELK o MELKs is to differentiate the risk factors underlying disasters. At para sa ating objectives, you are expected to number one, identify the risk factors underlying disasters. Two, describe each risk factors underlying disasters. Number three is to utilize the gained knowledge in real-life situations to avoid harm and assure safety. And last is to appreciate the importance of understanding the risk factors underlying disasters to mitigate the effects of disaster and practice mitigation measures as early as necessary. Let us start our discussion by giving or reviewing the three elements of disaster risk. So in the last module, we have already discussed the three elements of disaster risk and those are exposure, hazard, and vulnerability. First one is exposure. So based from the definition, exposure are the elements at risk from natural or man-made hazard. Ano ba yung mga elements na ito? It could be the human population, it could be the physical structure like buildings, road, houses, and other elements na maaaring ma-expose sa isang sakuna. Second one is the hazard, or the next one is hazard. It is a potentially dangerous physical occurrence, phenomenon, or human activity that may result in loss of life or injury, property damage, social and economic disruption or environmental degradation. So this includes earthquakes, tsunami, terrorism, typhoon, volcanic eruptions, and many more. And third is the vulnerability. So it is the condition determined by physical, social, economic, and environmental factors or processes which increase the susceptibility of a community to the impact of hazard. So when we say vulnerability, there are different conditions that determine vulnerability in a certain population. For example, which are more vulnerable in COVID-19 pandemic? Is it the senior citizen, the young ones, or those in middle ages? Dito ay alam na alam naman natin na ang vulnerable ay ang mga senior citizen at ang mga bata since mahina ang kanilang immune system. Another is, in a certain typhoon, sino ang mas vulnerable? Ang pamilyang naninirahan sa bahay na gawa sa light materials o ang pamilyang naninirahan sa concrete houses? So those are the three elements of disaster risk. Next is the formula in calculating disaster risk. So we have disaster risk is equal to hazard times exposure times vulnerability. According to this formula, if there is no hazard, then the risk is null. The same if the population or vulnerability is null. Ano ang ibig sabihin ng formula na to? Pinapakita lang dito na kapag wala ang isang element or absent ang isang element, ay magiging nal na ang risk sa isang hazard or disaster. Let us now talk about the risk factors underlying disasters. First, we have the severity of exposure. In severity of exposure, it measures those who experience disaster firsthand which has the highest risk of developing future mental problems followed by those in contact with the victims such as rescue workers and healthcare practitioners and the lowest risk are, are those most distant like those who have awareness of the disaster only through news dito ay kung sino ba ang mas exposed in a certain hazard let's say in the covid-19 pandemic who are more exposed Siyempre, ang first hand natin ay yung nagkasakit o tinamaan ng COVID-19. Also with his or her 
family. Second natin ay ang mga frontliners, ang mga health workers dahil mas matagal silang nakababad. And mas malaki ang chance na magkaroon sila ng COVID-19 because sila yung exposed and sila yung nasa hospital sa kanila dinadala yung mga may sakit. Another ay ang mga PNP dahil sila ang nasa mga checkpoints and there is also a chance na mahawa din sila o kaya naman ay yung mga kabataan na labas ng labas kahit di naman pwede. And yung people with lowest risk ay yung mga taong nasa malalayong lugar at hindi naman na-expose sa mga nagkaroon ng COVID-19. Another is kapag may volcanic eruption, sino ba ang mas expose? Ang first hand natin dito, yung mga tao o pamilya na malapit sa vulkan. So that is severity of exposure. Another one is gender and family. So the female gender suffers more adverse effects. So this worsens when children are present at home. Another example ay kung gaano ba kalaki yung family. Ilan ang bilang ng bata o ng matanda because they are more vulnerable sa any hazard or they are more prone sa diseases and they because they are weak. So syempre, mas madaming maaapektuhan kung mas madami ang bilang ng miyembro ng pamilya lalong-lalo na kapag mayroong matatanda at mga bata. Third is the age. In terms of age, mas affected ang mga matatanda at mga bata. Gamitin ulit nating example ang COVID-19 pandemic. Sabi nga natin, mas mahina ang kanilang mga immune system compare sa mga nasa middle ages. Another, adults in the age range of 40 to 60 are more stressed after disasters but in general, Children exhibit more stress after disasters than adults do. Last is the economic status of country. Evidence indicates that severe mental problems resulting from disasters are more prevalent in developing countries like the Philippines. Furthermore, it has been observed that natural disasters tend to have more adverse effects in developing countries man cause disasters in developed countries. Philippines is a developing country and whenever there is a disaster, there is more chance na mahihirapan ang bansa natin na makabawi. Siyempre, ito ay nangangailangan ng malaking pondo, mga evacuation centers, trainings, and plants kung paano ba natin maiiwasan at maaagapan ng isang disaster. Again, these are the potential factors that increases the risk for having this what we call disasters. First is the severity of exposure. Number two is gender and family. Number three, we have age. And number four is the economic status of the country. Aside sa apat na nabanggit, na mga risk factors underlying the disasters, we also have here the secondary factors which underlie disasters and those are climate change, environmental degradation, globalized economic development, poverty and inequality, poorly planned and managed urban development, and last is the weak governance. Let us discover why the following factors can also increase disasters. First is the climate change. Climate change can increase disaster risk in a variety of ways. First is by altering the frequency and intensity of hazard events, affecting vulnerability to hazards and changing exposure patterns. For most people, the expression climate change means the alteration of the world's climate that we humans are causing such as burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, and other practices that increase the carbon footprint and concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. 
This in line with the official definition by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or the UNFCCC that climate change is the change that can be attributed directly or indirectly to human activity that alters the composition of the global atmosphere and which is in addition to natural climate variability observed over comparable time periods. In climate change, yung dating saktong init lang, mas mainit na ngayon, or yung mahihinang bagyo ay mas malalakas na ang nararanasan natin. So kung mas malalakas at napapadalas ang mga bagyo, ay mas madaming naapektuhan sa bansa natin. Number two is environmental degradation. In environmental degradation, changes to environment can influence the frequency and intensity of hazard as well as our exposure and vulnerability to this hazard. For instance, deforestation of slopes often leads to an increase in landslide hazard and removal of mangroves can increase the damage caused by storm surge. It is both a driver and a consequence of disasters reducing the capacity of the environment to meet social and ecological needs. Overconsumption of natural resources results in environmental degradation, reducing the effectiveness of essential ecosystem services, such as the mitigation of floods and landslides. This leads to increased risk from disasters and in turn, natural hazards can further degrade the environment. So in environmental degradation, since pinuputol nga natin yung mga puno at kinakalbo yung mga kag kagubatan at ginagawang mga agricultural land at kinoconvert ang lands into subdivisions, so nawawala yung ating pangprotekta sa kahit anumang sakuna. Number three is the globalized economic development. It results in an increase polarization between the rich and poor on a global scale, currently increasing the exposure of assets in hazard-prone areas. Globalized economic development provides currently increasing the exposure of assets in hazard-prone areas. Globalized economic development provides an opportunity to build resilience if effectively managed by participating in risk-sensitive development strategies such as investing in protective infrastructure, environmental management, and upgrading informal settlements, risk can be reduced. Dominance and increase of wealth in certain regions and cities are expected to have increased hazard exposure. When a country is poor or cannot support measures for mitigation or creating ways to prevent possibility of disasters, mas malaki ang chance ng maapektuhan ang isang bansa. Fourth is the poverty and inequality. Impoverished people are more likely to live in hazard-exposed areas and are less able to invest in risk-reducing measures. The lack of access to insurance and social protection means that people in poverty are often forced to use their already limited assets to buffer disaster losses, which drives them into further poverty. Poverty is therefore both a cause and consequence of disaster risk, particularly extensive risk with drought being the hazard most closely associated with poverty. The vulnerability is not simply about poverty, but extensive research over the past 30 years has revealed that it is generally the poor who tend to suffer worst from disasters. So alam na alam naman natin na whenever na magkaroon ng sakuna, lindol, pandemia, typhoon, landslide, o kahit isang sunog, Ang unang-unang naapektuhan dito ay ang mga mahihirap. Fifth is the poorly planned and managed urban development. 
A new wave of urbanization is unfolding in hazard-exposed countries and with it, new opportunities for resilient investment emerge. People, poverty, and disaster risk are increasingly concentrated in cities. The growing rate of urbanization and the increase in population density can lead to creation of risk, especially when urbanization is rapid. Poorly planned and occurring in a context of widespread poverty, growing concentrations of people and economic activities in many cities are seen to overlap with areas of high risk exposure. And for our last factor is the weak governance. Weak governance zones are investments environment in which public sector actors are unable or unwilling to assume their roles and responsibilities in protecting rights, providing basic services and public services. Disaster risk is disproportionately concentrated in lower income countries with weak governance. Disaster risk governance refers to the specific arrangement that societies put in place to manage their disaster risk. Within a broader context of risk governance, this reflects how risk is valued against a backdrop of broader social and economic concerns. And that ends our discussion for our module 2, which is all about the risk factors underlying disasters.